So for those of you new to Jumpstart products, Jumpstart is a fantastic way to get new players started for old players to have some fun. Basically, they are like four to five dollar booster packs and each pack comes with half of a deck. So you get uh, 20 cards total. Um, you get eight lands and 12 playables. And then you're supposed to buy two Jumpstart packs and shuffle them together and play a, a game with a full 40 card deck. Um, they're... The original product was amazing. Everyone loved it. They've kind of replaced theme boosters with Jumpstart packs for each set, and they failed miserably. They're terribly designed. They don't have any of the stuff that made Jumpstart interesting and a good product. Um, so people are kind of falling off of the Jumpstart bandwagon, but this new Jumpstart 2022 list looks like they're returning to that giant pool of variety so you never really know what you're gonna get there's some really great uh goal cards in here that if you crack them open you know it's a huge deal um and yeah it looks like some of the themes are gonna be really fun to mix and match it looks like there's about 20 themes per color so there's tons of variety in these booster boxes um and booster packs and this is definitely if you're if you're into that pack battle limited magic sort of vibe where you just you don't know what you're going to play you sit down you open some stuff you shuffle it together and you play there's nothing better than jumpstart jumpstart functions well together these packs are designed to work together um internally and then when you mix two of them together you have the potential to make something really cool uh you also have the potential to just have two sort of separate things that are trying to do their own thing but you get that uh surprise you get that variety um this is the ultimate like pack battle kind of situation and uh, i'm really excited to see wizards returning to jumpstart uh proper with the 2022 lineup without further ado uh let's just jump into white uh we'll go down the list there's no dual colored cards in jumpstart because that would defeat the purpose there's when you open a pack of jumpstart you get one color you open a second pack of jumpstart you might get the same color but you might get a second color and then it kind of you mix it together to form either a two color or a mono colored deck uh so there's no dual colored cards there's no gold cards in this set um, just because each pack has to be a single color identity. Um, so let's jump into white. Let me pop up my card preview here and bam. There we go. So our first card is Distinguished Conjurer. It's one in a white for a 1-2 human wizard with whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, gain a life. Four and a white, tap it to exile another target creature you control, then return it to the battlefield. So there's obviously a blink uh, theme in Jumpstart 2022. People are excited about that. Blink is, is really fun to play. Um, people who play a lot of cube love blink. People who play a lot of original Jumpstart love blink. Um, yeah. So another disclaimer we'll just do right off the bat. Um, I don't know every magic card and I don't know what of these are reprints, what of them are brand new. So bear with me. If there's something in here that is a reprint, let me know if you're uh, aware. Otherwise, we're just going to go through these cards, talk about them, um, and then we'll jump over to look at the actual card lists and booster themes. So the second card we've got is Ingenious Leonin. There's obviously another a cat theme as well in white. Four and a white for a 4-4 four, four cat soldier. Pay three and a white to put a 1-1 one, one counter on another target attacking creature you control. If that creature is a cat, it also gains first strike till end of turn. Pretty good. Cats like to attack and gain life. Uh, very white playstyle. And we've got Lita, Mechanical Engineer. Two white for a 3-3 three, three legendary artifact creature artificer at mythic rare uh, it has vigilance and at the beginning of your end step untap each other artifact creature you control so this is kind of like um the clock what is that called oh my god i'm absolutely blanking there is a 
artifact clock that lets you untap all of your creatures um, with every untap step. This is sort of like that. Uh, then you pay three and a white, tap it, create a 5-5 five, five colorless vehicle artifact token named Zeppelin with flying and crew three. So they make vehicles and they untap artifacts. That's pretty cool. There's also a vehicles uh, theme in white. Then we've got Magnanimous Magistrate. What a name. Uh, five and a white for a three, four creature human advisor. When a magistrate enters the battlefield or... It enters the battlefield with five reprieve counters on it. When another non-token creature you control dies, if its mana value was one or greater, you may remo remove a reprieve counter from Magistrate. If you do, return that card to the battlefield under its owner's control. So this is six mana for a three, four, and you get to save five things. As long as they had mana as long as they weren't zero mana cost uh that's pretty cool and then we've got the one everyone's talking about because this art is awesome preston the banisher two and a white for a two five legendary creature rabbit wizard at rare whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control if it wasn't cast create a a token that's a copy of that creature except for it's an 01 white illusion one and a white sacrifice five illusions exile target non-land permanent so this is one of those cards that you know takes advantage of blinking um a blinked creature is entering the battlefield and not being cast uh so you can make tokens of everything you blink and then obviously as you make a bunch of tokens near the late game you can spend some mana sack some creatures um and exile non-land permanent so a little bit of early game razzle dazzle with some late game uh board cleanup very very cool then we've got arrest so they're also doing a lot of reprints with anime art style um i just downloaded everything on the scryfall list i'm not sure why everything's not on there or what's missing so some of these are going to be reprints with the japanese they've got this anime style um and people are loving it everyone on the internet's talking about it uh it's pretty cool so this is arrest which is a, a reprint i believe two and a white for an enchantment aura enchant creature enchanted creature can't block attack and its activated abilities can't be activated so it just fully pacifies them uh then we've got a japanese version of i can't remember what this card is let me just look real fast i apologize where is this card this one this one is balin wandering knight balin wandering knight um it has first strike so it's a two white white for a three three cat knight legendary creature. Uh, it has first strike and Balan Wandering Knight has double strike as long as two or more equipment are attached to it. So it's an equipment matters um, cat knight. It could have double strike, which is pretty powerful. And then you pay one and a white to attach all equipment you control to Balan. That is with the new art style and the Japanese text, like that is anime, aggro, waifu material, hands down. Very cool card, very cool card. Uh, I'm sure it's a reprint. I've never seen this card before. Uh, I mean, I've never seen this one before, especially, but I've never seen Balan before as well. Even in the, um, you know, the really popular uh, decks that uh, use a lot of equipment. Maybe because it's not legal in anything. I'm just looking at the list now. It's legal in Legacy Vintage Commander. It was only printed in Treasure Chest, Commander 2017, and now Jumpstart 2022. So that's why I haven't seen it in anything because it's only available in three um 
three formats that I don't play a lot of. All right, next one is Flicker of Fate. One and a white for an instant. Exile target creature or enchantment, then return it to its battlefield. To the battlefield under its owner's control. Simple blink instant spell. These are the bread and butter of the blinks decks. Um, this helps you trigger all of your blink effects. It's pretty great. Uh, King of, of the Pride. Oh, this lion's vaping a bit. Two and a white for a 2-1 cat creature. Other cats you control get plus two, plus one. That's a nice little lord. His Their stats are a little bad. Uh, but it's also not legendary, so you can have four of these on the battlefield at one time, and they'll all pump each other up. I don't mind it. It's okay. Then we've got the ultimate cat. A Johnny Strength of the Pride. Two white, white for a five loyalty legendary planeswalker. Uh, a Johnny's plus one ability is you gain life equal to the number of creatures you control, plus the number of planeswalkers you control. So pretty good. Minus two, create a 2-2 two -two cat soldier creature token named a Johnny's Pride Mate with whenever you gain life, put a 1-1 one -one counter on it. And it's zero ability. If you have at least 15 life more than your starting life total, exile a Johnny Strength of the Pride and each artifact and creature your opponents control. That is pretty crazy. You a full board wipe for zero loyalty. All you need to do is get 15 more life. Not extremely hard and white. Then we've got a Johnny's Pride Mate, which uh, is the card. Uh, this is the card version of a Johnny's token. So Johnny's Pride Mate is one and a white for a 2-2 Cat Soldier. Base stats, that's already good. Uh, whenever you gain life, put a 1-1 one -one counter on it. That's also very good. Um, so that'll trigger once every life gain. So it's more advantageous to gain one life at a time than it is to gain five life, than six life. Um, next up, we've got Felidar Retreat, which is also a reprint, I believe. Three and a white for an enchantment with landfall. Whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, choose one, create a 2-2 white cat beast creature token, or put a 1-1 one -one counter on each creature you control. Those creatures gain vigilance until end of turn. This is a really powerful enchantment um, and can really, really swing games. Just gonna take a swig of coffee. My Speak Human mug. Oh, my camera's backwards, you can't read it. My camera's backwards. Next up, we've got a Famous reprint. Everyone hates. Everyone but white players hate this card. Uh, Leonin War Leader. Two white white for a four four cat soldier creature. Whenever Leonin War Leader attacks, create two one one white cat creature tokens with lifelink that are tapped and attacking. This is in the. If you play a lot of arena, this is in the mono white um, starter deck, and it's a very powerful card. Then we've got Regal Caracol. Three white white for a 3-3 three, three cat creature. Other cats you control get 1-1 one, one and have a lifelink. When Regal Caracol enters the battlefield, create two 1-1 one, one cat creature tokens with lifelink. Cool. So you immediately, you pay five mana, you get a 3-3, three, three, and you get two 2-2s. Two, two. So for five mana, you get seven power and toughness. That's pretty good. Trove Warden, two white white for a 3-4 cat beast uh, with vigilance and landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, exile target permanent card with mana value 3 or less from your graveyard. When Trove Warden dies, put each permanent exiled with it onto the battlefield under the control of that card's owner. That's crazy. A 3-4 with vigilance for 4 is already good. And this landfall trigger is really sweet. I've never seen this card before. If this is a reprint, I've never seen it before. It's really, really cool. I love landfall decks. Uh, I, tr I truly do. I've, I don't play a lot of like green 
red, uh, but I did make a landfall deck in paper just to have fun um, and occupy some time. And it's a lot of fun to play. This is a really cool landfall trigger. You definitely want to play this um, later in the game. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, exile target permanent. Okay, so you have to exile something every time you play a land. It's not a may. So eventually, if you don't have a big enough graveyard, you're going to have to exile stuff from your opponent's graveyard, which isn't good. But... Hopefully you play this later in the game when you've lost a lot of cats. Um, pretty neat. And we've got our Agris Koth Eternal Soldier. It's a little fuzzy, uh, the image. Three and a white for a 3-4 legendary creature Spirit Soldier. And because it's a Spirit Soldier, it has to have red-white in its color identity. Um, so this has Vigilance. I said there was no two-color cards, and... This proves me wrong, but it is a split mana cost, which means it can still be played in just a white deck. So I'm sort of right. Not 100% right. Um, when Agris becomes the target of an ability that targets only it, you may pay. Spirit Bro is smug as hell. Spirit Bro is smug as hell. What's up, Angel Bay? If you... Um, when it becomes the target of an ability that targets only it, you may pay two, one and a Boros. Uh, if you do copy that ability for each other creature you control, that ability could target. Each copy targets a different one of those creatures. This is great. So if you're playing an Auras deck, Spirit Auras deck, um, you play an Aura uh, that targets Ar Agris, and you pay two mana and you can put that aura on all of your creatures that's pretty crazy there's gonna be a neat um what are, what is this stuff actually agris so oh it's not gonna tell me it won't tell me what it's legal in until it's actually out um maybe the Maybe the actual wizards list will tell me. Gatherer. Agris. Oh, see, the wizards list doesn't even actually... Doesn't have the card on it yet. Because the card isn't out yet. Okay, so... If you're playing... Um, this in commander... And they could be your commander. Um, I can see this playing really cool in like a light pause deck. Or even if you want to play something a little bit more spicy, you play this in a um, just a full enchantment deck. Enchantress. Uh, that would be really cool. Next up, we've got Angelic Cub. One white for a 1-1 one, one cat angel. Whenever Angelic Cub becomes the target of a spell or ability for the first time each turn, put a 1-1 one, one counter on it. As long as Angelic Cub has three or more counters on it, it has flying. So that's not bad. It's a little creepy. Not gonna lie. But uh, it's cool. The art is really cool. Miranda Meeks on that art. Um, and then the last white card we have uh, from Scryfall, we've got Chains of Custody. Two and a white for an enchantment aura. Enchant creature you control. When Chains of Custody enters the battlefield, exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls until Chains of Custody leaves the battlefield. Enchant creature has Ward 2. So this is a lockdown enchantment that also is an aura. So you steal something from your opponent's board, but you also give one of your creatures Ward 2. I think that's really cool. 100% think that's really cool. Uh, let's hop over to blue. First up, we've got Elandra Sky Dreamer. Two blue blue for a 2-4 legendary creature merfolk wizard at rare. 
Whenever you draw your second card each turn, create a 2-2 blue drake creature token with flying. Ooh, this could go in my Vandals deck. You could do Vandals and Drakes. Whenever you draw your fifth card each turn, Alondra, Sky Dreamer, and Drakes you control each get plus X plus X until end of turn where X is the number of cards in your hand. Wow. Okay. Just a card draw behemoth right there. That's really cool. Uh, next up, we've got Biblioplex Kraken. I love a good Kraken. Four and a blue for a four five Kraken. Uh, when Biblioplex Kraken enters the battlefield, scry three. Uh, when it attacks, you may return another creature you control to its owner's hand. If you do, it can't be blocked. Kraken can't be blocked. So that's pretty neat. Scry's three is really nice. Um, you could also sort of save things. If you attack all and they block well, I guess you would have to choose what to bounce when this attacks. Um, yeah, it's okay. It also doesn't trigger Runo. Runo is a six mana. Uh, so it doesn't really have a room. It doesn't really have room in the Runo deck. Um, yeah, it's okay. You might put it in the below six mana creatures just so you can make copies of it. But interesting. Uh, next up, we've got a hold for questioning with some interesting art. You don't really see angles like this in magic art very often. Uh, three and a blue for an enchantment aura, enchant creature, or planeswalker. When hold for questioning enters the battlefield, tap enchanted permanent and investigate. So you make a clue token. Uh, enchanted permanent doesn't untap during its controller's untap step, and its activated abilities can't be activated. Oh my god, they made a bubble snare for planeswalkers. That's pretty cool. I love a good bubble snare. Isu the Abominable. Abom... I always think I say that word wrong, but I'm saying it right the first time, every time, and then I can't say it the second time. Um, Isu the Abominable is three blue blue for a 5-5 five five legendary snow creature yeti. Yes, snow creatures. You may look at the top card of your library anytime. You may play snow lands and cast snow spells from the top of your library. Whenever another snow permanent enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay green, white, or blue. If you do, put a 1-1 counter on Isu. So this is really cool because as your commander, the color identity is uh, white, green, blue, which has a ton of snow creatures in it. That's a neat color identity for a snow commander. Outside of um, Commander, I'd be interested to see how many... We're going to look at the deck breakdowns or the pack breakdowns in a minute, but you'd have to have a, a large amount. At least one or two of these packs has to be like all snow lands, uh, which kind of make those packs worth quite a bit more than the normal packs just based on the lands alone. Uh, perhaps they will print to the boring snow lands that nobody wants, um, but they're still worth more than basic lands. And then we've got Kinos, Kin, Kinesos, Priest of Thassa. One and a blue for a 1-3 legendary creature, Merfolk Cleric. Interesting type line. If you would scry any number of cards, scry that many plus one instead. Okay. For three and a green or blue, look at the top card of your library. If it's a Kraken, Leviathan, Octopus, or Serpent creature card, you may put it onto the battlefield. If you don't put the card onto the battlefield, you may put it in on the bottom of your library. That's interesting. Normally, I try to... Like, this might find a home in that Runo deck, just because it triggers with the same uh, creature types that... Bruno triggers with and perhaps this is a good way to filter the top of your deck so that you get Bruno to flip sooner interesting then we've got a launch mishap two and a white for an instant counter target creature or planeswalker spell create a 1-1 one -one colorless thopter artifact creature token with flying interesting the three mana counter spell is always good 
uh, when it has two colorless and one blue. Lots of the three mana counter spells lately have been one and double blue pips, which makes them a little bit more difficult to cast on turn three if you're playing a multicolored deck. Uh, but this one's cool. Counters Planeswalkers too, which is neat. Merfolk Pupils. This guy looks is so cool. It's got a little water bubble. Uh, one and a blue for a 1-1 Merfolk Wizard. When Merfolk w Pupil enters the battlefield, draw a card, then discard a card. So you loot when it ETBs. One and a blue, exile Merfolk Pupil from your graveyard, draw a card, then discard a card. So you can loot twice with Pupil, which is really cool. And then we've got the You Wouldn't Steal a Magic card, would you? Card. Pirated copy is four and a blue for a zero zero shapeshifter pirate. You may have pirated copy enter the battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield. Except it's a pirate in addition to its other types and it has when this creature or another creature with the same name deals combat damage to a player, you draw a card. So that's really cool because all of the shapeshifters, you know, only half of them let you copy your opponent's stuff. This one lets you copy anything so you can take your opponent's things. But also, if you make a copy of one of your opponent's things and let it through, you get to draw a card. So that gives you sort of an extra level on top of the decision of who to copy, what to copy. Very interesting design here. It is expensive for a shapeshifter. Um, you know, a lot of them are two blue blue, uh, one blue blue. It's five mana for a shapeshifter is a little interesting, but again, you get all that added benefit of card draw. And then we've got Soul Rend, three and a blue. This is really cool art. Drew Tucker on the art, very cool. Uh, three blue for an instant. Choose one counter target spell unless it's control who pays four or draw two cards. Uh, that's not good. That's just not a good card. Um, draw two cards for four mana is not good. Counter target spell unless it's controller pays four. You've already paid four. That's also not good. There are other cards that do better things for cheaper. Uh, just not. That's just not a good card. Synchronized Eviction. Oh, he's throwing like a merfolk and a, a bunch of merfolk out of the water? What is going on? Oh, there's like hands pulling this giant through a portal. Scary. Uh, synchronized Eviction is four and a blue for an instant. This spell costs two less to cast if you control at least two creature types that share... Two creatures that share a creature type. So it could be two and a blue... Put target non-land permanent into its owner's library second from the top. I mean, that's not great. I'd rather it say put it on the top or the bottom of opponent's library, but... Eh, it's okay, I guess. It's not great. Uh, here we've got a nice little anime merfolk. Miro Regir... Regery? Is that like a is that a word? Regery. It's a Manx word meaning cavalier, king, knight, paladin. Weird. Weird indeed. All right. Learn something new every day. Miro Regery is two and a blue for a 2-2 two -two Merfolk Soldier. Other Merfolks you control get 1-1. One -one. Whenever you cast a Merfolk spell, you may tap or untap target permanent. Very cool. Uh, this is a better Merfolk Lord than the one that came in Brother, uh, Dominar United. 
Then we've got mirror image, two in a blue for a zero zero shapeshifter. You may have mirror image enter the battlefield as a copy of a creature you control. That's just a solid reprint. I think this card has been around for a little while. Um, I can picture what the original looks like. Yeah, it's the big crazy Kraken thing. Um, yeah, it's cool. It's a cheap, um, a cheap shapeshifter clone. Pretty good. Uh, so this is Spectral Sailor, a very popular uh, card in the Blue Spirits deck. Uh, Spectral Sailor is one blue for a 1-1 one, one Spirit Pirate, Pirate Spirit. It has flash and flying, and you can pay three and a blue to draw a card. Uh, this has become increasingly popular in the last few months as well because uh, a half of the field at the modern and legacy or the modern tournaments have been playing uh mono blue spirits and this is a major piece in that deck very cool i like the the art on it um i even don't mind them printing just the japanese versions like i don't i don't mind that at all uh this one is hold on let me look for it Wait, does it say it in the corner? No. I thought it did for a second. Jumpstart previews. This one is Spell Stutter Sprite. So Spell Stutter Sprite is one and a blue for a 1-1 one, one fairy wizard with flash and flying. And then the rest of the text states... When Spell Stutter Sprite enters the battlefield, counter target spell with converted mana cost X or less, where X is the number of fairies you control. So there's probably going to be a fairies pack uh, in this jumpstart set, which is really cool. And then we've got cute anime Whirler Rogue, which is a staple in Artificer Rogue uh, decks. Two blue blue for a 2-2 two -two human rogue Artificer. When it enters the battlefield, create two... 1-1 one, one colorless thopter artifact creature tokens with flying. And then you can tap two untapped artifacts you control. Target creature can't be blocked this turn. This is a very good uh, piece to any of the ninjutsu decks in commander, but also artifact decks. So these cards are cool that, uh, you know, get multiple uses, have homes in multiple different styles. Let's jump into black. First up, we've got Ash Coat of the Shadow Swarm. So I'm very excited because they're bringing rats themes back to Jumpstart, and I love the rat sticks. Um, Ash Coat the Shadow Swarm is three and a black for a three four legendary creature rat warlock. Very cool. Whenever Ash Coat the Shadow Swarm attacks or blocks, other rats you control get plus X plus X until end of turn where X is the number of rats you control. At the beginning of your end step, you may mill four cards. If you do, return up to two rat creature cards from your graveyard to your hand. That's pretty great. So you can mill four, return two. So you're going, you're basically milling two every turn and you get to bring stuff back from the graveyard. It's pretty awesome. Next up, we've got Conductor of Cacophony. Three and a black for a two one demon creature. When Conductor of Cacophony enters the battle, oh, it enters the battlefield with two 1-1 one, one counters on it. Cool. So it's a three, it's a four, three for four, which is pretty good. You can pay black to remove a 1-1 one, one counter from it. It deals one damage to each other creature and each player. Oh, interesting. That's interesting. Then we've got Creeping Bloodsucker. Oh my god, that art is like sucking the blood out of his face holes. That art is insane. Um, 
One and a black for a 1-2 creature vampire. At the beginning of your upkeep, Creeping Bloodsucker deals 1 damage to each opponent. You gain life equal to the damage dealt this way. Okay. So you drain 1 on your upkeep. That's pretty cool. Next up, we've got Deadly Plot. Oh, get it? Because it's like a grave plot. But also like a scheme. Uh, three and a black for an instant. Choose one. Destroy target creature or planeswalker. It's a little expensive for a destroy spell. Return target zombie creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. Also an expensive um, graveyard spell. I feel like this card, much like the blue cards that we said weren't very good, um, I feel like this card would be interesting if it said choose one or both. Next up we've got Disciple of Perdition, that's cool R2, dang. One and a black for a 1-3 human warlock. When Disciple of Perdition dies, you may choose one. If you have exactly 13 life, you may choose both. Draw a card and lose a life, or exile target opponent's graveyard, that player loses a life. I mean, that's not bad. That's pretty cool. Uh, then we've got some rats, ossuary rats. Five and a black for a 3-2 rat creature. Uh, when ossuary rats enters the battlefield, it deals X damage to target creature or planeswalker, where X is the number of creature cards in your graveyard. Fairly cool. That art is also terrifying. We've got Rodolph Duskbringer. The most D&D player character name you've ever heard in your life. Rodolph is five and a black for a 4-4 four, four vampire angel legendary creature. With flying, death touch, and lifelink. Okay. Whenever you gain life, R Rodolph Dustbringer gains indestructible until end of turn. That's cool. At the beginning of your end step, you may pay one and either a white or black. When you do, return target creature card with mana value X or less from your graveyard to the battlefield where X is the amount of life you gained this turn. Damn. I mean, that's going to go great in my Vampire Life Gain deck. Just saying. Skull Slither Worm, three and a black for a 3-3 three, three worm. Look, he's wearing a mask. Cute. I mean, it's creepy as hell, but cute. When Skull Slither Worm enters the battlefield, each opponent discards a card for each opponent who can't put two 1-1 one, one counters on Skull Slither Worm. Very cool. Suspicious Shambler is... Three and a black for a 4-2 creature zombie. Uh, four mana for a 4-2 zombie. Okay. Four black black. Exile Suspicious Shambler from your graveyard and create two 2-2 two, two black zombie creature tokens. Activate only as a sorcery. Okay. Oh, I get it. They're making a two zombies in an overcoat joke. That's pretty funny. It was the perfect disguise, at least until its stomach started moaning. And they've got the little eyes peeking out. It's two zombies in an overcoat. That's so dumb. Termination fac Facilitator. Oh. Okay. One in a black for a 1-3 creature human assassin rare. Tap it to put a bounty counter on target creature or planeswalker. Activate only as a sorcery. Whenever a creature or planeswalker an opponent controls with a bounty counter on it is dealt damage, destroy it. Damn, okay. So it's like pseudo death touch almost. And we've got some anime diabolic edict. One in a black instant target player sacrifices a creature. Edict has been around forever. This card is amazing and well played in black decks. 
Then we've got Feast on the Fallen. Two and a black for an enchantment. At the beginning of each upkeep, if an opponent lost life that last turn, put a 1-1 counter on target creature you control. Cool. Then we've got uh, Body Pillow, Oathsworn Vampire. One and a black for a 2-2 Vampire Knight. Uh, Oathsworn Vampire enters the battlefield tapped. You may cast Oathsworn Vampire from your graveyard if you've gained life this turn. So it just keeps coming back as long as you keep gaining life. Very cool. Uh, then we've got Ogre Slumlord, which is a very blurry photo of it. This is a classic Rats uh, deck piece. Ogre Slumlord is 3 black black for a 3-3 three, three Ogre Rogue. Whenever another non-token creature dies, you may create a 1-1 one, one black rat creature token, and it gives rats you control death touch. Very cool. Uh, really neat that they're reprinting this. It looks like an anime art style. It's very hard to see this art. It's very blurry. Uh, next up, we've got... Ooh, the pain painful artist. Blood artist. One in a black for an 0-1 vampire. Whenever Blood Artist or another creature dies, that target player loses one life, and you gain one life. Another classic vampire. Feast of Blood. That, okay, that art, though, is so good. Such a pain, painful artist pose. The Tortured Artist. Feast of Blood, one in a black for a sorcery. Cast this spell only if you control two or more vampires. Destroy target creature. You gain four life. I mean, that's amazing. How did I not know this card existed? Feast of Blood. Did it not exist? Oh, it did. Zendikar. Damn. Well, I'm glad they're reprinting it. Very cool. Uh, then we've got Festering Evil, 3 black black for an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, Festering Evil deals 1 damage to each creature and each player. Interesting. You can pay black black, sacrifice Festering Evil. It deals 3 damage to each creature and each player. Oh. So this is just hurt everything, but it's even across the board, so you can't be mad at me? I guess. Renegade Demon. Oh, that guy looks angry. Three black black for a 5-3 demon. With no rules text. Five mana for a 5-3 demon? I mean, that's not good, right? Then we've got... Oh, that one's also really blurry. Izumi Bone Reader. One in a black for a 1-1 one, one rat shaman. You can pay one, sacrifice a creature, target player discards a card, activate only as a sorcery. Very neat, especially if you have like uh, Slumlord where you're making rat tokens and you can then sacrifice them. I wish it wasn't only as a sorcery because I would. it would be fun to keep your opponent with zero cards in hand. As soon as they do their upkeep and draw, you sacrifice a token and make them discard that card. That's probably why they have it as a sorcery only. Uh, Burglar Rat. This is a reprint. Uh, one and a black for a 1-1 one, one creature rat. Whenever Burglar Rat enters the battlefield, each opponent discards a card. Love it. Chittering Rats. Another rat reprint. One black black for a 2-2 two, two rat creature. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, target opponent puts a card from their hand on top of their library. So if you haven't gotten the theme yet, rats like to make people discard. Crypt Rats, two and a black for a 1-1 one, one creature rat. Pay X, Crypt Rat deals X damage to each creature and each player. Spend only black mana on X. Interesting. So you're going to give up your Crypt Rats. Demon of Catastrophes. Two black black for a 6-6 six, six demon as an additional cost to cast this creature. Sacrifice a creature. And it has flying and trample. Four mana, 6-6 six, six, flying and trample. And you have to sacrifice something? That's pretty good. 
Dread Presence. Ooh, new nightmares? Three and a black for a nightmare creature. Three, three. Whenever a swamp enters the battlefield under your control, choose one. You can draw a card and lose a life, or it deals two damage to any target and you gain two life. That's very cool. Very much going in my um, Umbris deck. Very, very cool. And we've got a reprint of Eviscerate. Three and a black for a sorcery. Destroy target creature. It's not a great removal spell, but, you know, if you're playing limited, like... If you're playing pack battles with uh, Jumpstart, that's a pretty good removal spell. Then we've got Cothofed, Soul Hoarder. Four black black for a 6-6 six, six legendary creature demon. Look at this guy. Uh, whenever a permanent owned by another player is put into a graveyard from the battlefield. Oops. My bad. Um... Target, whenever permanent, another owned by another player is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, you draw a card and lose a life. I mean, that's not bad. It's not great. Then we've got, ooh, Sizan Perverter of Truth. Three black black for a 6-5 legendary creature, Demon Spirit. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player loses two life and draws two cards. Nasty. Okay. Sinuous Vermin, one and a black for a 2-2 Rat Horror. It has a three black black for Monstrosity 3, so you can make this uh, monstrous by putting three counters on it. Or five mana. So it's a 2-2 two, two for 2 early game, and then it's a 5-5 five, five for 5 late game. It would be a 5-5 five, five for 7 late game. But it also, as long as Sinuous Vermin is monstrous, it has Menace. So 5-5 five, five for 7 with Menace, I would probably take that. That's a decent card. Typhoid Rats reprint, one black mana for a 1-1 one, one rat creature with death touch. Good old classic Typhoid Rats. I actually got my first ever competitive magic tournament I played in. I got, I lost a game. I won my first match, but then got DQ'd from that match because I played Typhoid Rats, which wasn't legal in the uh, tournament wasn't legal in the format we were playing and the tournament organizer which i think was mtg melee it didn't give me any warnings when i like submitted the deck list it gave me warnings about another card that i then removed and replaced but it gave me no warnings about typhoid rat and i got dq'd from that or i lost that first match even though i won it because they gave me like a second chance um, and let me keep playing, but it was difficult. It made me very upset. Then we've got Ulcerate, one and a, one black for an instant. Target creature gets minus three, minus three until end of turn. You lose three life. So this is like a mix between um, Disfigure and what is the one that everyone plays? I can't remember. It's two mana. It's kill target creature. Destroy target creature or planeswalker. Not planeswalker. Destroy target creature. You lose two life. Everyone plays it. Uh, because most of the time it's just easier to pay two life than let them have their bomb. This is kind of a mix between those two cards. And I don't hate it. Ulcerate. Great name. Uh, then we go to red. Got some neat cards in red. We've got Ardaz, Cobbler of War. Lots of goblins in red. No zombie waifu art cards. Uh, I think, I don't think so. Let me just double check for you. I mean, there's that Conductor of Concophonies kind of waifu material, but it's not anime art. Just the Oathsworn Vampire is the only anime art. Vamp Husband, oh yeah. 
<laughs> My deck gets the anime husband. Your deck does not get the waifu, I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't see any. Maybe it's hard to make zombies into waifu material. Although Liliana is like the waifu queen in magic. So we've got Ardaz, the Cobbler of War. One and a red for a 1-1 Goblin Shaman legendary creature with haste. Whenever Ardaz or another creature enters the battlefield under your control, that creature gets plus 2 plus 0 oh until end of turn. Cool. So you play this on turn 2 and you can hit them for 3? Then you can pay 3 and a red to create a 1-1 red goblin creature token with haste. Activate only as a sorcery. That's awesome, actually. This is a great card. Uh, whenever other creatures enter the battlefield, that creature gets plus 2 plus 0. Oh. That's awesome. This is like a strictly better version of that Philogy Vanguard from Brothers War. Auntie Blight. Bad influence. So this is our poster child for um, Jumpstart. You can see Auntie Blight up there. Actually, you know what? Let me flip this over there. Let me put this over here. So it looks like I'm actually like looking at the F and cards. Look at the F and cards, my guy. Um, sorry, we didn't actually go over Auntie Blight. Bad influence, two and a red for a two, two devil advisor, legendary creature with flying. Um, whenever a source you control deals damage to you, Put that many 1-1 counters on Auntie Blight, Bad Influence. You can pay one and a red, tap it to remove X 1-1 counters from Auntie Blight. It deals X damage to any target. Interesting. So you can continuously like pump this thing up and then deal damage to yourself, but I don't know why you would. There's got to be a different out than that. We've got Brazen Cannonade, three and a black for an enchant- three and a black, three and a red for an enchantment. Whenever an attacking creature you control dies, Brazen Cannonade deals two damage to each opponent. It also has raid. At the beginning of your post-combat main phase, if you attacked with a creature this turn, exile the top card of your library. Till the end of combat on your next turn, you may play that card. That's a really powerful enchantment. Spellcaster deck's gonna love this. Um, aggro red is gonna love this. That's if you drop that on turn four, that really shores up the rest of the game. You've already done, you know, a handful of damage by turn four, so that's gonna be a big swing. And we've got Coldborn Entity, very cool looking. Four and a red for a four-four elemental creature. Then it, then it has you can pay two and a red. Coldborn Entity deals one damage to target creature, token, player, or planeswalker. Interesting. So you can pay that infinite times. Um, I don't hate that. Five mana for a 4-4 four, four that can ping. Daring Piracy. Two and a red for an enchantment. At the beginning of combat on your turn, create a 1-1 one, one red pirate creature token with menace and haste. Exile it at the beginning of the next end step. Very cool. Just pumping out pirates. Goblin Researcher, three and a red for a 3-3 three, three Goblin Wizard creature. Look at that, hook's nose. What is he doing there? What is that little thing? Can't tell what that is. Um, when Goblin Researcher enters the battlefield, exile the top card of your library. During any turn you attacked with Goblin Researcher, you may play that card. Interesting. I don't think I've ever seen that um, text rule before. Then we've got Mizix, Replica Rider, four and a red for a four five Goblin Wizard with that's legendary. Um, so there. <laughs> They're riding a an artifact replica of Nib Mizzet, and their name is Mizix. 
and they have red and blue in their color identity. And interesting. Flying, so this is a 4-5 goblin wizard with flying. Whenever you cast a spell from anywhere other than your hand, you may pay one and either a blue or red. If you do copy that spell, you may choose new targets for that copy. If the copy is a permanent spell, it gains haste and at the beginning of your end step, sacrifice this permanent. So it's a hyper aggro spells deck. Very cool. Ogre Battlecaster. Hype. Two and a red for a 3-3 three, three Ogre Shaman with first strike. When Ogre Battlecaster attacks, you may cast a target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard by paying red red in addition to its other costs. If that spell would be put into a graveyard, exile it instead. When you cast that spell, Ogre Battlecaster gets plus X plus O until end of turn where X is that spell's mana value. They're going hard on this red aggro. Because you can, if you can cast things from your graveyard, that also tri triggers Mizzix. You can cast something, copy it, make a copy of it, attack with like, all of a sudden you brought back two other things or cast two new spells. Like, that's kind of crazy. Um, next up, we've got Plundering Predator. Oh, no, this isn't our last one. For some reason, I put some colorless spells in here by accident, so we'll skip over those. Plundering Predator, four and a red for a 3-3 three, three dragon creature with flying. When Plundering Predator enters the battlefield, you may discard a card. If you do draw a card, that's just not good. It is a common, so it's fine. Four, five mana for a 3-3 three, three flyer. I mean, I'll take it in a pinch. Um, so we'll skip over these. The last red card I have here is a reprint of Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker. Yes, they're reprinting Kiki Jiki. Um, Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker is two red, red, red for a 2 2 Goblin Shaman legendary creature at Mythic Rarity. It has haste and it has tap. Create a token that's a copy of a target non legendary creature you control, except it has haste. Sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. So, that card we're always talking about that's like controlling standard. If you play red, you have to play a copy of Fable of the Mirror Breaker because the back side of it is reflections of Kiki Jiki. Uh, they didn't want to reprint Kiki Jiki for Kamigawa because Kamigawa was set in the future. Uh, so they printed something that told the story of Kiki Jiki without having to be Kiki Jiki. And I've said Kiki Jiki way too many times now in this last sentence. And it sounds like I'm speaking alien languages. Um, so we finally have a reprint of Kiki Jiki. I'm just going to keep saying Kiki Jiki over and over again because Kiki Jiki is a fun thing to say. Uh, so it just makes copies of things. This is super powerful in like every red deck imaginable. There, Any deck that has red in it, this is powerful. Uh, the only reason why you might not want to do this if you're playing a red splash deck is because it had three red pips and its casting cost um and it could be a little difficult to cast if you're playing a grixis deck for instance the grixis vampire deck is a very good home for um uh, the fable of the mirror breaker so it would also be a good home for kiki jiki except that not a lot of those decks have a ton of red mana if you're leaning really heavy into the dual lands, the, the triomes, you should be able to manage. There's also a lot of cards that make treasure tokens uh, in those colors. So, you know, it's doable. Would you rather have a Kiki Jiki versus a Fable of the Mirror Breaker? That I don't know yet. I think that there's some upside with Fable. One, it's not targetable by destruction unless it's an enchantment destruction right away it takes a couple turns to get online uh, but you also get a discard outlet and you get um, a two, one one a two two red goblin shaman creature 
token with whenever this creature attacks, create a treasure. So it could be strictly better. Don't know. Um, this is far more expensive. I think they're just reprinting this because people love this card and they want to get more out there. Uh, and that is it. All I have for red right now. So we're going to look at green next. I'm trying to like decipher if these lists are like the same length. And I think they are. Uh, first up for green, we have Benevolent Hydra. X green green for a 1-1 one, one Hydra at rare. Benevolent Hydra enters the battlefield with X 1-1 one, one counters on it. So you get to decide how big it is. If one or more 1-1 one, one counters will be put on another creature you control, that many plus one counters are put on it instead so it gives all of your other things extra counters and you can tap it to remove a one one counter from benevolent hydra put a one one counter on another target creature so you want it to enter with as much as many counters as possible so that you can move those around help save some things in a fight what what have you um next up we've got giant ladybug that's terrifying Two and a green for a 4-1 Insect with Reach. A 4-1? When Giant Ladybug enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land card. Reveal it, then shuffle, and put that card on top. I mean, uh, that's, that's not great. It's a decent blocker, but on turn three, like you want to be playing something that's not just going to block well. If you put the basic land in your hands, maybe, or on the battlefield, maybe. Uh, next up, we've got Kibo Uktabi Prince. Two and a green for a 2-2 Monkey Noble Legendary Creature at Mythic Rare. Uh, tap Kibo. Each player creates a colorless artifact token named Banana with tap it, sacrifice this artifact, add red or green, you gain two life. Okay. Whenever an artifact an opponent controls is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, put a 1-1 one, one counter on each creature you control that's an ape or a monkey. Whenever Kibo attacks, defending player sacrifices an artifact. Oh my god, okay. So this is actually super powerful. You can tap this a bunch, so it's 3 mana, so you can get it out fairly early. You tap this a bunch, give all of your opponent. if you're playing commander, give all of your opponents, like... I don't know, two, three, four bananas. And then if they ever sacrifice those, you make sure you have apes and monkeys on your battlefield. All of your creatures get bigger. And then whenever it attacks, they are forced to sacrifice an artifact. So all of your things get bigger when it attacks as well. That's really cool. I like that. I've been really excited about green cards lately. I don't, I don't know. Mild-mannered librarian is one green for a 1-1 one, one human creature. Um, oh, I love the shadow play on this. Three and a green, mild-mannered librarian becomes a werewolf. Put two 1-1 one, one counters on it and you draw a card. Activate only once. So pay one, put it on the battlefield as a 1-1. One, one. Kind of does nothing. If it tapped for mana, that would be cool. Then you pay four, it becomes a 3-3 three, three werewolf, and you draw a card. I mean, like, ultimately that's not great. That's five mana total for a 3-3 three, three werewolf and a, and a card. I mean, I don't love that. We've got Primeval Herald, three and a green for a 3-1 Elf Scout. Hell yeah, Elves. Uh, has Trample whenever Primal Primeval Herald enters the battlefield or attacks. You may search your library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield, tapped, then shuffle. See, the Ladybug could have been doing this, but it's not. Uh, that's really cool. I love that. We've got Rampaging Growth. Search your library. Or, sorry, three green for an instant. Search your library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield, then shuffle. Until end of turn, that land becomes a 4 3 insect creature with reach and haste. It's still a land. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. 
Runati Behemoth Caller. Two and a green for a legendary creature, Cat Shaman. Its power and toughness are 1 3. Whenever you cast a creature spell with mana value 5 or greater, that creature enters the battlefield with X additional 1 1 counters on it, where X is the mana value minus 4. So if you cast a 10 mana card, it gets 6 more. It enters with 6 counters on it. That's crazy. Creatures you control with three or more 1 1 counters on it have haste. So you can play a 10 10. You play a 10. What is that card? That's It's an 8 8 for 10 mana. If you have this on the board, it comes in with six counters on it. So it's a 14 14. And it has haste. So you can attack with it right away. This guy's insane. Insane. We've got Spectral Hunt Caller, four and a black. Black. I always want to say black as the mana value. I don't know why. Four and a green for a four-four Wolf Spirit. Pay five and a green. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and gain Trample until end of turn. That's okay. Towering Gibbon. Oh, look at this giant boy. Three and a green for a Star Four Ape with reach. Towering Given's power is equal to the greatest mana value amongst creatures you control. Okay, so it could be a 10-4 or it could be a 1-4. I mean, actually, it would count itself. So at, at worst, it's a 4-4. Four, four. At best, it's a... I don't know, what is the Death Shadows actual mana cost? Like 17. Next up, we've got Zask, Skittering Swarm Lord. Swarm Lord. Three green green for a 5 5 insect legendary creature. You may play lands and cast insect spells from your graveyard. Cool. Whenever another insect you control dies, put it on the bottom of its owner's library, then mill two cards. Okay, so we. You want your insects to die so that you cycle through more of your deck. I like that. You pay one, a black, or a green. Target insect gets plus one, plus O, oh, and gains death touch until end of turn. I like that. That's pretty cool. Then we've got Anime Arlen. Arlen, Voice of the Pack, is a reprint, a, a reprint that people love. People love this card. Uh, four green green for a seven... Loyalty, Legendary Planeswalker, Arlen. Uh, each creature you control that's a wolf or werewolf enters the battlefield with an additional 1-1 one, one counter on it. And then you can minus 2, create a 2-2 two, two green wolf creature token. Um, so as is, you can make 3 2-2 two, two wolf tokens with Arlen until they run out of loyalty. Uh, which isn't too bad. Six mana, though, is a bit of a heavy cost up front, but you want to get this on the board as fast as possible so that all of your werewolves and wolves come in with the extra counters. Which also means that the tokens you're making come in with those extra counters. And it's it's, inter it's important to note, too, that they, they are counters, so when Arlen leaves, uh, they get to keep those counters. Elvish Rejuvenator, a little anime elf, two and a green for a 1-1 one, one elf druid. When it enters the battlefield, look at the top five cards of your library. You may put a land card from among them onto the battlefield tapped, put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Just a classic green elf ramp spell. With they reprinted Thrashing Brontodon in a cute anime style. People love Thrashing Brontodon. Um, it feels like they just chose all of the cards that people meme about all the time, and I, I don't hate it. One green green for a 3-4 creature dinosaur. Pay one, sacrifice Thrashing Brontodon to destroy target artifact or enchantment. We've got Uktabi Orangutan. Three and a green for a 2-2 creature ape. When it enters the battlefield, destroy target artifact. Oh, sorry. Destroy target artifact. 
then our last green card is Wicked Wolf. Two green green for a 3-3 three, three wolf creature. When it enters the battlefield, it fights up to one target creature you don't control. If you sacrifice a food, put a 1-1 one, one counter on Wicked Wolf, it gains indestructible until end of turn. So I'm assuming there's going to be a nice little food cycle um, in these jumpstart packs as well, which is exciting. And uh, we, we already did red, that was green, so all we've got left is colorless. And then we'll take a quick peek at the, we're already running like an hour long on this. So we'll take a quick peek at the deck list just to kind of see what the themes are. We won't go into every deck uh, and what they're trying to do. We'll just take a quick look at the themes. Uh, the first colorless card we have here is Dutiful Replicator. Three colorless for a 3-2 assembly worker artifact creature with Dutiful Replicator enters the battlefield. You may pay one when you do create a token that's a copy of target token. When you do create a token that's a copy of target token you control, not named Dutiful Replicator. Interesting. Then we've got Infernal Idol. Three colorless for an artifact. Tap it to add black. Pay one black black, sacrifice idol, you draw two cards and lose two life. I mean, that's a pretty decent mana rock. Draw two cards on a mana rock, that's good. Instruments of War, four colorless for an artifact with flash. As it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. Creatures you of the chosen type get plus one, plus one. Creatures you control of the chosen type get plus one, plus one. Very important distinction. Um, this is great. I think this is a uh, because it has flash. It's a it's a semi decent combat trick. Um, if you have a theme going, which you will, because all of the jumpstart packs have themes specifically, uh, but also a good include in artifact decks or creature um, theme decks. Planner Atlas, two uh, colorless for an artifact. When Atlas enters the bat or oh, and Atlas enters the battlefield tapped. When Atlas enters the battlefield, you may look at the top four cards of your library. If you do, reveal up to one land card from among them. Put that land on top of your library and the rest on the bottom of your in a random order. And then it taps for colorless after a turn when you get to untap it. That's okay. It's a slow mana rock. Cold Steel Heart. Great reprint. Two colorless for a snow artifact enters tapped uh as cold steel heart enters the battlefield choose a color tap it to add one mana of chosen color um so this counts towards snow permanence you control it also lets you choose the mana so you don't have to figure it out up front uh and this anime art is really cool i like it we've got magnifying glass three mana for an artifact that Tap to add colorless or pay for tap to investigate, which creates a clue token. Uh, that's a good reprint as well. Peace Walker Colossus. Aren't those words like oxymoronic together? Three mana for a 6-6 six, six artifact vehicle. If you pay one and a white, another target vehicle you control becomes an artifact creature until end of turn. Oh, that's cool. So this can like power up other artifacts. And then this has crew four. So it's a little bit tricky to crew, but having this on the battlefield lets you turn other vehicles into creatures. So you don't have to crew other vehicles. Then we've got a anime reprint of Karn Liberated. Seven colorless mana for a six loyalty planeswalker Karn Liberated is like one of the most popular Karns. Uh, I think it's the second most popular Karn. I'm not certain. Don't quote me on that. Um, the first one is that one that doesn't let you use artifacts. Um, what is the one everyone plays? Great creator. Activated abilities of artifacts your opponent's control can't be activated. That's the one everyone plays. Um, so 
the Karn Liberated enters with six loyalty on it. It has plus four. Target player exiles a card from their hand. That's insane. Um, minus three, exile target permanent. Okay. Minus 14, restart the game, leaving in exile all non-aura permanent cards exiled with Karn Liberated. Then put those cards onto the battlefield under your control. If someone ultimates Karn Liberated on you, you just feel bad. You have to restart the game and they get all the shit they exiled with it? No thanks. Scoop. Scoop them. Concede. Does that count as two match losses if you concede after an ultimate? Uh, and the last uh, colorless card we have here from the Scryfall list is Walking Ballista, another huge traditional, traditionally beloved card in the Artifact decks. Walking Ballista is XX mana cost for a 0-0 construct creature. It enters the battlefield with X 1-1 counters on it. You can pay four, put a 1-1 counter on it, move a 1-1 counter from it, and it deals one damage to any target. So, it's good early game, it's good late game, it's good at creature control, it's good at puffing itself, it's just good at everything. Yeah, so that's that's the whole shebang. Um, let me just grab my browser source. Alright, perfect. That's the right one. So that we can look at these jumpstart theme lists. What does that say? Fire? As in like fire. Burn burn him with fire. Going to go for my post work walk in. Fire. Nice. I appreciate you stopping by. Have a good walk probably chat at you in a little bit we're gonna play some gladiator after so come by and hang out um okay so this is the booster themes and card list okay again a reminder jumpstart 2022 arrives on next friday so a week from today if you're watching this today if you're watching this on youtube later um a week from december or november 25th it's arriving on december 2nd it's going to come in boxes you can buy them as single uh, packs as well each pack contains 20 cards which includes land uh, each jumpstart pack can contains 20 cards along with the lands you'll need plus one theme description card one to two rare or mythic cards and one anime inspired card okay so they're spreading the wealth on the anime inspired cards that's good um, so we're just going to really quickly burn through all of the themes so that we get an idea. There's a lot of them. Um, forty-six themes, forty-six combos. So there's a ton of themes. Uh, white has vehicles, knights, constellation, constellation two. Teamwork, Teamwork 2, Spirits, oh, what kind of Spirits do they have in here? Actually, I don't care. Spirits 2, they have Blink, a couple of Blink options. Uh, blink 2, Blink 3, 3 Blink op, 4 Blink options. They have uh, 1 Cat, 2 Cat, 3 Cat, 4 Cat. They have Law, Law 2. Law 3, Law 4, they have Holy, so it has stuff like Blessed Sanctuary, Emancipation Angel, Angelic Page, that kind of thing. Pretty cool. Uh, hello, where's the rest of these? Oh, weird. We've got Holy 2, Holy 3. Holy four, so these are mostly like angels and clerics and stuff. 
And then for blue, we've got Shapeshifters, which is awesome. Gigantoplasm. Bloodline Pretender. Oh my god, they are reprinting Changeling. This guy's so dumb looking. Love it. We've got Snow. Okay, cool. Let me look at the... So they are putting the Snow, the boring Kaldheim ones in there, I think. I'm not sure if these are the exact printing versions, but that's pretty cool. We've got Go to School. Lots of the Talarian Academy stuff, which is cute. Go to School 2. Oh, Ristic Study? Hell yeah, they're reprinting Ristic Study. Uh, Scrying. Scrying 2. Fairies. Fairies 2. Merfolk 1. Merfolk 2. Merfolk 3, Merfolk 4, they have Detective 1, 2, 3, 4, they've got Think Again, which I guess is going to be, oh, draw two cards, Synergy, that was pretty cool, and it's got a Jace Arcane Strategist in it, that's a pretty good one. They've got a second version of Think Again with no expensive Jace. Three, four versions of Think Again. Okay. Uh, inventive, so artificers and artifacts. They've got four of those. And then Black has Unlucky 13, so it's going to be a bunch of cares about having 13 life. They've got one Rats pack? Really? All of these big rats reprints and you've only got one variant? All right. Uh, they've got demons, one, two, boneyard, boneyard two, orbit. Really cool, orbit two. They've got cruel, which comes with a seer, Sir Conrad. I don't know why I said that word wrong. I, I know the name of that card. Uh, a second cruel, a third cruel, a fourth cruel. So these, are, all these variants are kind of like the same gist, uh, just without the like really expensive rare cards. Uh, so you still have like a chance to get a rare, uh, but not always. We've got bangs, so vamps, vamps two, vamps three, vamps four, zombies one, two. Three, four, four zombie decks. Four zombie packs. I know Angel Bait's gone, but four zombie packs. Then they've got Gross, one and two, and three and four. And Spicy. Oh, this is red now. Okay, we got Spicy. Uh, which comes with a Warhammer. Damn. We've got Speedy, which comes with a Kiki Jiki. Experimental, so artifacts and stuff. Dragons. So reprinting Lathless, which is pretty cool. And they've got a Sarkin variant too, nice. And they've got Cycling Deck, Goblins, a ton of Goblin. Treasure Making. Fiery, so like Elementals and and stuff. A couple of fiery variants. Raid. Raid's a cool mechanic. I like raid. So pirates and stuff. Pirates and raid triggers. And then... Oh, we've got some... We've got an Eldrazi pack. Dang. That's a big deal. Brood Monitor, Endbringer. Nothing like huge in here, but still people are going to be hunting for that. World Breaker is pretty big. Um, then we've got Primates, so the monkeys with uh, that. Where did he go? Kibo. Pretty cool. Uh, multi-headed. 
This is the Hydras, Hydras, Gigantics, Dinosaurs, and Growths. Landfall triggers, that's cool. Multiple landfalls. We've got Elves, I love it. Uh, they're reprinting Warmaster, which is great. So it kind of just looks like the list on Scryfall was just the reprints and the stuff with new art, maybe. We've got two, three, four variants on elves. I like it. We've got two, four variants on wolves. A ferocious. Uh, insects. Saw a lot of that. Yep. And then we've got Urza's, so colorless, with Karn Liberated, Ballista, um, and that is it. So out of that, you're able to make 46 theme combos. And I think that's really cool. I think I'm very excited for some of these cards in particular. I think the... Um, Stuff like Alondra is really cool. I also really like the... I have a, a I have a Vandal deck, which I love playing. It's so much fun to play. It's very, like, sort of not my speed. Like, I'm not doing a lot across the board. I'm doing a lot on my side of the board. I don't tend to play those, like, engine-type decks. Um, so this is a great little piece uh, for a deck like that. Um... Yeah, stuff like Whirler Rogue. These Japanese reprints are really cool. Uh, I'm trying to put together the Mono Blue Spirits deck from Worlds. So having the reprint of the Spectral Sailor is, is really key. There was lots of really cool rat stuff in black. Uh, some really interesting possible new commanders to build around. Uh, obviously, the reprinting of, like, Kikijiki is huge. People love this card. Um, there's also some really cool synergies between some of these haste cards in here. Uh, which ones? This Ogre Battlecaster and Mizzix in particular are really cool. I keep wanting to play um, Is It decks. Maybe I'll build an Is It Phoenix deck just so I can try it out. Uh, I just think that red is definitely on the bottom of the list of like cards that I enjoy, colors that I enjoy playing. So it's a little tricky for me. I think there's some really cool stuff in here. Um, I think there's some really interesting reprints. I love that they're putting their time and effort back into um, making Jumpstart that special thing that they used to do. Um, and by used to, I mean like just recently uh so having them put this thought and curation into a jumpstart product again uh is very great it's very it's going to be it's going to be great people are going to love playing this people are going to love trying to figure out what the best combos are i still buy original jumpstart packs i think i still have one in here um I still buy the original Jumpstart packs because I either want the, you know, really expensive bobs that were only reprinted in Jumpstart or, you know, the dogs pack. It was, it was key that we find the dogs one and just, just the mystery. It's like blind boxes to an extreme. It's like, you know, what's going to be in the pack. Once you see the front card that explains the theme for the most part, but you don't know what's going to be in the booster and it just adds this whole new thing like they're also amazing for picking up and playing right away uh shuffle two jumpstart packs together and you've got an interesting deck that may or may not work really well together for the most part you're not going to have a deck that bricks itself you're not going to have two themes that don't go well together at all or hinder one another necessarily so it's a difficult product to curate. It's a difficult set list to put together. And I encourage wizards to continue to put the thought and care into Jumpstart that it deserves because this is a fantastic product for new and old magic players. Uh, 
and to jumpstart 2022 looks to jump back on the trend of giving a shit about jumpstart again again it's coming out december 2nd thank you so much for sticking around to watch us go through all of the new cards all of the new anime art uh looking at the deck themes and i appreciate it if you're watching this on youtube definitely hit the like button if you've watched this long i thank you so much if you just skip to the end to see what i'm rambling about um i also thank you as well like that still counts as a view uh tons of people that are watching these videos still aren't subscribing and subscriber count is the only uh number that really matters to us right now because we need to reach a certain threshold in order to gain access to some of the important tools for content creation on youtube so if you're watching this and you're not subscribed please do subscribe it would mean a lot to me it would mean a lot to uh you know some of the people that are helping me behind the scenes it would be great and i would thank you endlessly for it i wish i had more to offer right now uh, but we're kind of juggling like 10 things uh at the moment so i'm gonna try to keep putting videos out as often as possible uh keep trying to you know maintain a position of fan yet curiously judgmental about business decisions card designs gameplay etc um and i hope you guys keep watching the watch the view numbers and the watch times have been insane lately and i can't thank you enough so 